Time now for the latest world sports from the BBC with me, Adi Adedoin. Coming up in the next 10 minutes, we'll have the latest from the Masters in Augusta. In football, Slavia Prague stunned Arsenal with a stoppage time equaliser in their Europa League quarterfinal first leg. We'll be discussing the French Open Tennis Championship, which has been delayed for a week. And we get ready for the return of the Indian Premier League, the most lucrative cricket tournament in the world. Well, we're going to start with football. It's been a busy night in the Europa League with the first leg matches in the quarterfinals all underway. Manchester United took a big step towards the final four with a 2-0 win over Granada in Spain. Marcus Rashford put United ahead on the half-hour mark with Bruno Fernandes wrapping up the victory with a 90th-minute penalty. But in London, Arsenal could only manage a draw after conceding a dramatic late equaliser against Slavia Prague. The BBC's John Southall was watching. A dramatic finale at the Emirates. Arsenal thought they'd grabbed a late winner and crucial advantage to take to Prague with them in the second leg when Nicolas Pepe dinked in four minutes from time. But the tie turned three minutes into added time as Thomas Holles stole in at the far post to head in the equaliser. A crucial away goal and a key moment in the tie. Arsenal all room missed chances. Willian hit the post. Lacazette struck the bar. Aubameyang shot wide from eight yards out. But on the flip side, Leno also denied Borrell and Provad. So the tie is evenly poised, but Slavia Prague will feel they have a slight advantage. Well, let's hear now from the Arsenal manager, Mikel Arteta. When you create big chances in Europe, you have to put them. And, um, and I think we made it much more than the result that we got. Uh, when we made the most difficult thing, which was... Just to score the first goal and, and just wait for the last four or five minutes um, to manage the game much better than we did. Um, we failed to do that and then we gave them the opportunity in the corner and they scored the goal, which puts the tie in a much um, different position. And I think looking back to what happened on the pitch uh, is not what we expected. In the night's other games, Roma came from behind to win 2 1 at Ajax and Gerard Moreno scored the only goal of the game, a penalty as Villarreal won at Dinamo Zagreb. The second leg of those ties take place next Thursday. Now, the first men's golf major of the year, the Masters, is on the way at Augusta. It's been a tough first round for some of the big names, and it's an Englishman who leads. Let's get the details from the BBC's John Murray. Yes, a tough day for most of the field, but the undisputed man of the day is Justin Rose, who leads after a 7 under par 65 in his 16th Masters. A runner-up twice, but quite the golf from him. Over the course of his last 11 holes, he picked up nine shots. So Justin Rose leading on seven under par by four shots from the left-handed American Brian Harmon and the Japanese Hideki Matsuyama, who are three under par. And other notable scores, John Rahm, a level par round of 72, defending ta champion Dustin Johnson, double bogey the 18th, a 74 for him. Justin Thomas is two over on the back nine. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau is five over on the back nine. And Rory McIlroy making his seventh attempt to complete the career grand slam of all four majors a very disappointing opening 76 for him four over par but justin rose leads okay thank you that's the bbc's john murray you can follow all the action on our website bbc.com forward slash sport let's go back to football because there's one match in the english premier league on friday fulham will move out of the bottom three if they beat wolves at craven cottage the fulham manager scott parker says there's little margin for error as they try to preserve their top flight status Every game we've got to win. It's been, we've been in this position for a long time in the sense of where we are as a, as a team and what we want to do. So, yeah, of course, Friday night is a game that we want to win, but so will be the following week against Arsenal. And then um, while I understand and the team understand that with now seven games to go, that the end of the season nears, um, then games become more important or certainly the essence on, that, on them games are to win. But nothing's really changed in, in my mindset. Um, so, yeah. A winnable game, a one we're going to go into and, and try and get a positive result out of on Friday night. As for Wolves, they'll be hoping to avoid a third straight defeat for only the second time under Nuno Espirito Santo. And the Wolves manager says he's fully aware of the threat that Fulham will pose. It's going to be very tough. We face a good team uh, with good players. Um, and we know that each and every match of the Premier League is tough. So we must prepare ourselves for, for tomorrow uh, to, compete, to compete well against a very good team. The organisers of the French Open Tennis Championships have confirmed that this year's tournament will be delayed by a week because of the coronavirus pandemic. 
The event was due to start on the 23rd of May, but first round matches will now get on the way on the 30th. The French Tennis Federation said the decision was taken in order to maximise the chances of the Grand Slam being played in front of as many spectators as possible in a safe environment. Last year's tournament was pushed back to September because of the pandemic with crowds limited to 1,000 per day. Let's get more on this now from the BBC's tennis commentator, Gigi Salmon. As we know, large parts of France are in lockdown, including Paris. Up until two days ago, they're reporting 40,000 cases a day of COVID-19. Now, people are saying, well, what difference does a week make? Speaking to the French government, their plan is to start opening up sport from towards the end of May, beginning of June. And the big thing for French Open for Roland Garros is to have crowds. Last year, they moved, they jumped from May, June to September, October without telling anybody because it was all about having crowds. They said at the time, we cannot envisage a Grand Slam with no crowds. That's not us. They wanted to have 12,000. They ended up having just 1,000 a day. And I think this has really come into their thinking this time around. By pushing it back a week, there might be a chance. We're not going to be at capacity at all, but there might be a better chance that they can have a crowd in. And as I say, for Roland Garros, the French Open, it is the most important thing for them, for their Grand Slam, to be enjoyed by spectators within the stadiums. Gigi Salmon there. Indian cricket legend Sachin Tendorkar has revealed on social media that he's out of hospital following treatment for coronavirus. Tendorkar says he will remain isolated with continued, while continuing to rest and recuperate. Meanwhile, the richest franchise tournament in world cricket begins on Friday as the Indian Premier League takes off for its 14th edition. The 2021 IPL season returns to India after last year's competition took place in the United Arab Emirates because of COVID-19. This year, for at least the beginning of the tournament, matches will be played behind closed doors. They'll also be played at neutral venues. Uh, India's Rishabh Pant has been promoted to lead the Delhi Capitals. He's enjoyed a spectacular uh, last six months representing his country and the wicketkeeper batsman says he's delighted to be named as captain. Yes, I feel it's a new role given to me and I would like to thank all the coaches and the owners for giving me this opportunity. And I would like to make most of this opportunity. That's what I'm looking forward to. We haven't won a title. I will try my level best to get a title this year. And I think as a team, we are playing nicely from last two, three years. Well, Mumbai Indians defeated the Delhi Capitals in last year's final. Mumbai are the most successful team in IPL history, winning five of the last eight titles. But can Delhi lead, can Delhi led by Pants claim the title this time around? Here's cricket journalist and author Karunya Keshev. Delhi will surely be hoping that. They've got a reputation as a young, fearless team and having Pant in charge is going to bolster that view. But as with Pant the batsman, there is a slight unpredictability with many of their players. Royal challengers Bangalore will fancy their chances again with Glenn Maxwell in the mix and some young Indian talent. They seem to have a better balance this time. Uh, And Punjab were one of the big spenders in the auction. There's a sense that if they get their combinations right, they could be a surprise success. And before we go, just a reminder of our top story here on the BBC World Service. The opening day of the first major of the year, the Masters is on the way. It's been a tough first round for some of the big names. The Englishman Justin Rhodes is the clubhouse leader. In football, it's been a busy night of Europa League action with quarterfinal first leg matches taking place. And Manchester United took a huge step towards the final four with a 2 0 win over Granada in Spain. Marcus Rashford put United ahead on the half hour Mac Bruno Fernandes, wrapping up the victory with a 90th minute penalty. Uh, it was a disappointing night for Arsenal, who conceded a late equaliser to draw 1 0 against Slavia Prague. In the night's other games, Roma came from behind to win 2 1 at Ajax and there was just one goal in the other game as Villarreal won at Dinamo Zagreb all on our website bbc.com forward slash sports but that's sport today